Okay, I boiled me a chicken today. And we'll leave the broth in the... In here, we're going to cut up some onions, carrots, and potatoes to go in the broth. So now, we're just going to take a few carrots, and we're going to peel them, and get them in our broth. This is called Benefield Chicken. Benefield Chicken is a dish my mama made when we were just kids, and it is in my first cookbook. So there's our carrots. I'm going to get this in the trash. And I did wash the carrots. I did wash the carrots and the potato before I peel them. That's one reason that's want to slide off of there. Let me just use a paring knife for this. I just cannot use a um, peeler on a potato. It drives me nuts. I'd much rather use my paring knife. So peel a couple of potatoes. I only have two actually. About out of potatoes. This has been a very rainy day in Georgia. Today's February the 5th. A lot of schools got called off and all kind of stuff in Alabama. So some of y'all have been stuck at home all day and a meal like this would be good on a rainy day. Nothing's better to me than stew. And really that's what this is. It's called Benefit Chicken, but it's a lot like chicken stew. All right, now we're going to cut up the potatoes. And of course, they won't take them near as long to get done. So I'll cut those up a little bit bigger. We're going to turn the eye back on. I'm just going to take an onion that I already had part of it sliced and I'm going to just slice some slices of onion into the stew. And we're going to boil all these together. We're going to bring that to a boil. We're going to bring that to a boil while we pick this chicken off the bone. So I am just going to take the good meat. And I'm actually just going to put it in the stew as I take it off the bone. And so you're going to do your entire chicken that way. Make sure you don't get your cartilage or anything crazy bones and stuff like that in your chicken stew. So just put a thigh, a leg, and a breast in your stew. And then you can come back and pick up the rest of it later. Don't put the gristle in there. And of course, if you're going to make this dish, I prefer that you boil your own chicken it's just better. All right, now while you're boiling those vegetables and they have started to boil, we're going to make some biscuits because you cannot have um, Benefit chicken without biscuits to go with them. So we're going to put in a couple of cups of self-rising flour. All right, this has been simmering for a while and my veggies are getting very, very soft. So I'm going to go ahead and add the rest of my chicken. I tasted it and it needs a little salt. We're going to add a little salt, some pepper, we're going to go ahead and add our chicken to it.
This is just the remainder of that whole chicken. So I use a whole chicken when I make this. And first I'm going to stir that and taste it and make sure I've got enough salt. Make sure your veg veggies are soft enough that your uh, spoon can just go right through them real easy, and they do. They're good and soft. So I'm going to taste this. Mama always put in a little bit of garlic salt. It still needs a little salt. I'm going to see if I've got garlic salt before I add more regular salt. I know I've got roasted garlic. It's not salt. It's not salt. It's just roasted garlic. So I'm just going to put a little bit of that in there. And we'll add a little salt. More salt. Now we're going to take four tablespoons of flour. Now I'm using Wondra flour because it mixes up real easy and you don't have to worry about um, lumps being in your soup. And it has four tablespoons of that flour in it. I'm going to pour, pour in, uh, fill it up until it's full, almost with milk. Put a lid on it. This one's got a hole for a straw. I'm just going to put my finger over it. And then we're just going to shake it good. And we're going to wait till that flour gets mixed all the way up in there really well. You can see it's still clinging to this side. So we'll shake it until it's in the milk really good. Now that should get thicker. You can always add more if it's not thick enough because you want it like, not a real thick gravy, but just a uh, gravy to pour over biscuits. We're going to serve this on top of biscuits. So you need to bring this to a boil and see if it's going to get thick. And if it's not, add more. You can use the same thing. You can do the same thing with regular flour as what we're doing with this Wonder Flour. So, you just um, use whatever you've got at home. Don't go and make a special trip to buy something. Just put it in there with cold milk like that and shake it really well um, or stir it really well with a whisk in a bowl so that you don't have lumpy stew. The biscuits just come out of the oven and they're nice and brown. So we are about to make a plate. Let y'all see how good this looks. All right, it's time to plate our stew. You're just gonna take your biscuits. You gotta make biscuits with Benefield chicken and make sure you get the stew thick enough. And it might take you quite a few rounds before you can get it thick enough. So uh, just keep that in mind when you're making the stew that you want it to be nice and thick so that when you pour it over your biscuits, um, it's a gravy. See if I can't find us some chicken. Here's some chicken. We're going to put some cracked black pepper on it. Yummy! Let's eat. All right, it's time to eat, y'all. And I'm gonna grab me my bottled root beer that I bought. Yummy! Yummy! It is Hank's, and it's pretty good. Here's our stew over our biscuits. We're gonna give it a taste. 
Nice comfort food on a rainy day. Oh my Lord, it's so good. That brings back childhood memories because my mama made this for us when we were kids. It's so good. Volume one cookbook recipe. Family recipe too. Thanks for watching. Colored Valley Cooks, where we cook like mama did. <laughs> good supper. All right, now while you're boiling those vegetables and they have started to boil, we're going to make some biscuits because you cannot have um, Benefield chicken without biscuits to go with them. So we're going to put in a couple of cups of self-rising flour, a pinch of soda because Granny always did, and about a quarter cup of shortening. And we're going to blend this in with our blending fork. We're going to be using whole buttermilk. Hope y'all are having a great night. I sure am. I was feeling puny yesterday, but today I feel much better. So, I'm making a good supper. So you're just going to blend the shortening in until it's about pea size. Don't overdo it or your biscuits won't be nice and fluffy. That's about right. Now you're going to add buttermilk until all the flour is clinging together. So add just enough so that when you mix it up, there's no flour left in the bottom. You can see that's exactly what has just happened. And you don't want it to be real, uh, real, you don't want it to be real wet because if it is, then it's stickier and harder to handle when you get it out on the counter, okay? So now we're just going to flour our surface. Put our biscuit dough out on it. My dog's crying. Put a little flour on the top. And you're going to need this for at least seven or eight times, okay? Adding flour as you need to. Then you're going to press it down about a half inch. Grease your pan. I'll scoot it over so y'all can see the pan. You're going to bake these at 450 degrees. I'm going to bring y'all down a little closer so y'all can see a little better while I cut them out.
I think that's good. You can see they're already trying to separate and make layers. And rise a little before I even get them in the pan. I hear a bus dropping kids off. I'll roll up a couple of small ones and put in here. Now you can pat them with buttermilk on the top or not. It's totally up to you. 450 degrees, 20 minutes. The biscuits just come out of the oven and they're nice and brown.